What's happening guys? Kenny with In The Pocket and today I have a, an exciting video for you and that's about uh, this little guy. And this is the Spyderco Spidey Chef. Super excited to tell you guys about this today. Um, I um, really was excited to get this guy and loved using it so I'm excited to tell you guys about it. Um, now, I'm going to be doing this video in the same format I've been doing lately, uh, the hype versus reality. Um, and first off, I'm going to start you with uh, putting the uh, specs on the page right here so that we don't waste any time. You can pause it and look at that if um, you can't get to it online. Uh, but yeah, and then I'm going to go right into go, um, giving you guys some uh, size comparisons. Um, just so you guys know, uh, I use this background just so we don't have to go into like showing you how long this and that is. Um, these are half inch squares, so you guys can do the math. You can do it in your head. Um, but yeah, I don't want to waste any time. I know this isn't the best like looking backdrop, and I know you guys probably like the the wood backdrop better. But let me know what you guys think if you want me to stop using this backdrop. I know a lot of knife reviewers use it. Uh, yeah, so size comparisons. Uh, this is the Manix 2. Very similar in size to the Spidey Chef. That's why I brought him in. Kind of the same color. Like almost like swapped colors too. It's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, and then the Para 3. You guys always know I've got to bring this guy in here. Um, one of my favorite EDC knives. Yep, yeah. and then um, let me go ahead and bring in. This is kind of like uh, this guy's Tai Chung brother. Or one of them. Oh, got some uh, fuzz on there. Uh, that's the uh, Mantra. And been stoked on this guy too. You guys probably saw the unboxing about a week or two ago. Uh, yeah, and then uh, we'll take him out of there and bring in a few Benchmates. Here's the 940. I know a lot of you guys have those, so I like to use them in size comparison. Uh, the Mini Grip. Little guy. Put him in there. And then just one more knife to give you an impression of how big this guy will be in your hand and stuff, in your pocket. Um, that, that's the um, Cold Steel American Lawman. So I know a lot of you guys have those. All right, moving right along. Get right into this review. I'm going to start with the hype. Uh, the reasons I wanted to buy this, the things I saw about it uh, that drew me in, the things that I liked. Uh, and getting right into it, it'll be the big, one of the big things was just the uniqueness of this knife. Um, the cool factor. It's very different than most of the stuff out there. It's got a really cool shape to it. Um, it's intriguing. Uh, that was one of the things that essentially drew me in at first, you know, just the look. Then, um, then of course, it's made in the Tai Chung factory, which... At the time when I bought this, I really only had one Tai Chung knife, and that was my uh, Chaparral. And I wanted another one. I, I kind of was like, wow, I was impressed with the Chaparral, and I wanted to see another Tai Chung factory knife. So not that there's anything wrong with the Golden Colorado factory. I do love the Golden Colorado factory as well. But uh, I did like the fit and finish and just the the way there that factory does it too. Uh so yeah, I saw that. Um, it was also, it was a really, uh, it was a titanium frame lock, which, you know, that I didn't have a lot of them and I did kind of wanted to try this one. Uh, I didn't have a Spyderco uh, titanium frame lock, so I wanted to see how they did it, how, how good their frame locks were. Um, it was a great EDC size, 3.3 uh, inch blade, you know, uh, 4.6 handle, I think. Um, so it was a good size, or 4.46 handle, that's what it is. Um, and then um, only a 0.4 thickness um, this way. So it was a good size for the pocket. Um, keeps it fairly slim compared to other Spider Co's. So, uh, you know, I was intrigued by that. Um, it, got, it gets great reviews too. There's a lot of guys who absolutely love this knife, including like Pete um, at Cedric and Ada loves his. So it was something I was like, you know, I wanted to try it. It, it gets such good reviews from other um, YouTube reviewers. Um, also, 
uh, it has a wide, nice wide slicey uh, LC200 blade. And I've been really wanting to try LC200N. I ordered a native or I pre-ordered a native probably six, eight months ago and I still haven't, we, we haven't seen those yet. So um, I really wanted to try LC200N and see what the hype was about. And also I have that uh, Spyderco Mule team, but that's not in the lineup yet until I finish doing the handles, which I'm sure all you guys out there are wondering when the fuck that's gonna happen. But uh, yeah, so, and also with the LC200N, I wanted to see how it sharpened and everything. So super stoked with that. Um, it's pretty much all stainless too, you know, it's something that was really intriguing. Like um, I do live by the beach and there's a lot of humidity at times. So I like the fact that it could be um, 100%, well, not nothing's 100% really, but um, this is like almost rust proof, you know? There's a few things like the detent ball and stuff that will rust if you misuse it, you know? If you're just like really just leave it in salt water for a week. But other than that, it's you don't really have to worry about this in EDC, uh, which is great. Uh, and then I wanted a knife for kind of like around the house. Like, I know this sounds crazy when I have kitchen knives there. Sometimes I like to just cut up a fruit with my pocket knife and not pull out a kitchen knife and have to wash it. And I, I just, I don't know, maybe I'm weird. There's probably guys out there that are going to agree with me. But I like to have a, my pocket knife to be able to chop it up. Um, yeah, so that was pretty much all the hype that made me want to get it. And then... I did. As soon as it came back in stock, which these kind of go in and out of stock, they, they come and then they go really fast and then they, you know, they'll come back. I think they're, I think everyone's having a little bit of trouble getting their product from overseas right now with, um, with the whole tariffs thing. But these took a really long time to come back into stock this time. And as soon as I saw it on Blade HQ, I just, I just went for it. I was like, you know what? I shouldn't buy any knives right now. Um, I've had this guy for about two months now. I really like to give these things a good shake before I, before I talk to you guys about it when I'm doing a real review because I don't want to just put it in hand and be like, cut a few things with it and then tell you how I feel. I want to use this thing over a matter of time and see how it really does um, you know, age with me. Uh, of course, I can always do long-term reviews too after like a year or so of using it and really putting it to use and then give you guys a good um, review at that point as well, which maybe in like a year, I'll give you guys a full review of this. Um, but yeah, so in the reality, when I got this guy, when I opened the package, oh man, I mean, I was super stoked. Uh, it came like a lot of other Tai Chung factory knives from what I've heard and what I've seen now. This thing was excellently done. Uh, just, you know, the 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 uh, titanium, the stone wash on the titanium is beautiful. It's really just, it's going to snail trail, but it looks great. And it's got a nice dull, like, just subtle beauty to it. Uh, it also has um, pretty good chamfering. Chamfering everywhere is really nice. And it has this little cutaway here where you can kind of tuck your, you know, put your thumb there and for the pinch grip which you use a lot of with this knife. And it it's really just, you know, the chamfering and everything is beautifully done. Uh, and, you know, the standoffs, everything's just nicely done. Perfect centering. Um, the, uh, I think, believe that all the hardware is titanium as well, which is a nice touch. Um, it seems like all the tolerances are just really dead on. Like they did a really good job setting the tolerances and and just making a nicely, like, just super tight knife. Um, yeah, excellently done in that sense. And it's just, uh, it took a little getting used to the deployment. Like, right when it came out of the box, I went to deploy it, and it just was like, I, I mean, now I'm doing it perfectly, but it, it came out, because I'm trying to, you know, do it like a normal, like, for instance, you got this knife here, you can just flick it straight, you know, straight here, and the knife comes out with the uh, pair of three, you're just pushing it like straight. Whereas with this knife, you almost have to get used to it in the sense of you almost have to go out with it. It, it does fly out, but you have to go this way instead of going this way. 
so that takes a little getting used to. And then like the spidey hole, you gotta kind of get your fingernail in there. Um, I can still spidey flick it. A lot of people I've heard complain about that. Um, something I'll talk about later. But yeah, uh, action was smooth, really smooth as far as like, I mean, kind of almost glassy, real smooth going in. There's no like weird like jump, you know, like that. It's really smooth going in. Got no complaints there. Um, it's not like falling free. You gotta kind of shake it to get it to drop from the top and then you can shake it down in. It's getting better too after two months of using this knife. It's, it's a lot smoother than when I first got it. You couldn't even get it to do that when I first got it. But it has worn in pretty well. I have not taken this knife apart or anything. I don't really plan on it unless, you know, probably in time. I, I do need to clean it. You guys can probably see how there's some pocket lint in there and stuff. But yeah, um, really like that smooth action um, with a great lockup. Uh, this is like... Almost, I wouldn't say like 80% lockup, which, you know, a lot of guys might be like, oh, that's way too much. It's not going to wear well. Well, dude, it's, it's got plenty of room to move there, but you got a solid lockup. There's no way that thing's going to slip over and release the blade on your fingers. Um, and then there was a little lock stick, which is still kind of there. Let's see if you can hear it. No, you couldn't really hear it there. Let me see if... It's so subtle. I mean, just a, like a, just a little bit of a click, which I actually don't mind as well. That's something that's going to keep the lock from disengaging when you don't want it to. So it's nothing that's going to bother me or even bother you for that matter for most of you guys out there. It's just a subtle stick that I actually kind of think is a, um, almost like a safety measure in a sense. Uh, but nothing that's going to really bother you and it has nice access to the lock to the lock bar there so there's no need you know you're not struggling to get that thing shut um excellent excellently done in that sense um i really do love that it has awesome ergos as well that comes with the chamfering and all that the way that the the handle curves and just fits right into the palm and oh god guys this thing is so comfortable in hand it's a little thin but because, like thin in this way, but because it's a little wider this way, it really does just fit amazing. And I could bear down on this thing. There's really no hot spots. Maybe the clip a little, but really not. I mean, I don't know, man. I, I use this knife a lot, and it really felt good in hand. I never felt any hot spots. Uh, in saying that, the clip, uh, while we're on the clip, excellent. Um, love this clip. A lot better than my Chaparral. My Chaparral has like this spider. It, it's super weak. You hear about those like super weak clips. This one is perfect. Perfect retention. Amazing sliding in and out of the pocket. So easy and just unassuming too. Nice deep carry in the pocket. In the pocket, this knife is excellent. Nice and slim. Um, this way it's a little wider than like, for instance, obviously this is like the slimmest knife fucking ever but um you know a little wider but in that sense the way it curves back into your pocket i mean just beautifully done i mean you can no problem getting to anything else in your pocket awesome awesome carry great in the pocket um and the ergos are amazing uh the lower blade sorry for jumping around a little there the lower blade here you know, you can get like right up to the edge of the blade, which is nice. Um, and you can roll excellent in the kitchen if you guys are cutting up fruit or something. Not that everyone, a lot of people go, oh, I don't use my knife for that. Well, I do. And it, it works great. Uh, and with the LC200N, you don't have to worry about the limes or, you know, lemons or oranges or anything like that or kiwis. Anything with acidic, you know, an acidic fruit, it still works great. So... Yeah, really loving that. Uh, the LC200N is amazing. Uh, fuck, blowing me away with the edge retention. God damn, this thing is so sweet for being a pretty much stainless steel, um, pretty much rust-proof steel in that sense. Um, it is amazing. Now, in sharpening, I just sharpened this guy up. You can probably see it is like a pretty much mirror edge. I didn't go nuts trying to get all the scratch marks out, but it is pretty mirrored. Uh, 
And the steel was easy to sharpen, but I was a bit surprised. It's a little harder than I thought it was gonna be. Thought it was gonna be a bit softer. And it did kind of act like S30 in the way the stone kind of slid across it. But it also has a different feel, something funky that, I think it's the nitrogen-based steels that they really just have a different feel to them. Mm. Sorry guys, I uh, had to get a drink of coffee there. I'm getting throat, throat's pretty dry. Um, yeah, it has a different feel. Those stones, I, it's hard to explain, really hard to explain, but it felt different than normal steels. Um, like S30, S35, I mean, even M4, like all the steels feel a little bit different, but this one has like a whole different feel to it. Even burr, the way the burr comes up, everything is just a little different with the LC200N, at least what I found. Um, but excellent steel, man, just amazing. Uh, yeah, and as far as like, as far as the, the, I mean, just being amazing, like ed in edge retention, really, it was just excellent. Um, going back, I know I bounced around on this because I talked about in the pocket already, but um, at 3.74 ounces, excellent in the pocket. And, um, you know, like I said, I, I think it's 3.74 is what mine reads, but it said 3.78. Yeah, you know how that goes, guys. It's just a little off, but really close. Excellent in the pocket as far as weight goes for what you're getting. Um, not bad at all. Uh, and then as far as the blade... I know bouncing around um, the blade goes as far as being slicey it is nice and thin behind the edge I'm not gonna spend too much time on it because I know some guys don't like it but um, the reading I got God, all right, the reading I got at probably the thinnest point was like 19 thousands I think is what I got yeah 18 18 thousands at the thinnest point at the thickest point up here at the tip so it was like 26 or something. 27. 25. Okay. So I got 25 like right here at the tip where it's the thickest. Which, you know, at 18 thousandths, it could be thinner, you know. But I feel like they had a lot of blade. They could have gone thinner. But that's pretty good. I mean, with this broad of a blade, 18 thousandths behind the edge, it's super slicey. It goes straight through cardboard. I'll go ahead and put some uh, footage of that. I did, um, in sharpening this, I got it straight. Well, I'll probably, I'll do the cardboard showing you that. Um, slicing cardboard, this thing is amazing. It really does do excellent. Even with the factory edge, it sliced just like butter. Like, a, you know, like a butter knife through, through uh, a hot butter knife through butter. Jesus Christ. Fuck. Um, sorry, I'm just like having lost for words right now but yeah excellent excellent slicing blade and then as far as um as far as the um sharpening i did get this thing hair whittling sharp and i'll put that on right now i'll show you a little bit i did get it on film for you guys a little bit of it whittling some hair uh yeah i did get this thing pretty much hair whittling and yeah just sharpened well and just really nice now if I'm going to talk a little bit of negatives on this guy, which I really don't have much negative to say about it, but if I could bring something negative into it, the negatives would pretty much be that the LC200, as amazing as it is, does scratch up easily. You can see the scratches here. Uh, it scratches pretty easily, almost like a, the SUS410 or whatever that they um, use to clad uh, Vitoku. That scratches really easily. This scratch is kind of similar, really easily. Like even cardboard will scratch this face, which it's a small price to pay, guys. I mean, those guys that use their knives aren't gonna give a shit. I don't give a shit. Um, the fact that it's not gonna rust is more, it's, it's way more appealing than the fact that it might scratch up. I don't give a shit if it scratches up. But yeah, the fact that it won't rust is way more important to me. But yeah, a little thing, just a little nitpick. And then also there's just something that some guys will be like, well, come on, man, this thing's a you know, $215 knife. They can't put an over travel stop on it and a 
lock bar, um, I mean, what's it called? The over travel and the, uh, lock interface, you know, it's like, to be honest, all right, guys, this is going to get kind of heavy here, but I, fuck, I got this guy. I get more lock stick with this knife. You can hear that. I get more lock stick with this knife and it has a fucking, you know, it has the interface and, and, uh, over travel stop. So I think that's all relative. I mean, this thing has better action and better lockup than that one with an over travel stop and, and, um, you know, all this, it's like other reviewers say how they're like, oh, it's, um, a, a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. I kind of believe that here. Um, if you're smart, you're not going to be pushing this bar way past the frame. You're just going to put it right to where it needs to, to release the blade in use. I mean, this is like perfectly fine and there's really no lock stick because they, I believe they carbonized the, the, the lock face. So yeah, it's excellently done and I got no issues and you're not going to pull this. I mean, it's just, you don't, it's not necessary on this knife. It's, it's excellently done. So I got no complaints really. Um, those are just nitpicks that other people might have on the knife. Not me, not me, just maybe you guys, but I, I love this thing and I'm really just, I got no complaints on this amazing knife guys. And, and I would suggest it to anyone out there looking for a knife that's, you know, almost rust proof and has a nice slicey blade. Uh, if you're just looking for an EDC knife, this is excellent. It's, it's amazing. And if you're looking for something to use in the kitchen, you know, this is awesome. It's still not as good as a kitchen knife, not as thin, you know, it's got a nice, um, you know, I think the stock's uh, 0.11, you know, which is, it's not super thick. It's not even as thick as, uh, I think the, I think the 940 is 0.12. Yeah. So it's not even as, as thick as the 940, but you know, it, it is like, I mean, it's thick, it's thicker than a, than a kitchen knife. So you, you know, it's not a kitchen knife, but it works great in the kitchen. I'll say that it, it does work excellently in the kitchen and, um, just all around this knife is excellent and it's crazy looking too. It's unique. People will look at it and they're like, whoa, what is that? So I really do love this knife, guys. And, and I couldn't praise it more. You know, it, it's just a great knife. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, sorry it ran a little long. Uh, really appreciate everything you guys do. Uh, and I look forward to making more videos. Uh, keep it going. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about the background if you're like just over this grid pattern. I think it gives some value because it shows you guys the dimensions without me talking about it too much. So I really like that about it. So it's, let me know what you guys think. Um, thanks again. Have a great day guys and I'll see you again soon.